song written by Harold Jacobs. This song was composed as a gift to Sea Alaska Heritage Institute specifically for celebration in 1994. It is based on the words of George Davis, a Deshitan from Angoon, and the words were spoken in 1980 at the Sea Alaska Elders Conference in Sitka. We don't want what happened, what we did here only to echo in the air how our grandfathers used to do things. Yes, you have unwrapped it for us. That is why we will, be op we will open again this container of wisdom left in our care. The words of the song say, we will open again this container of wisdom left in our care. The song features our children who will open the box of wisdom and carry on our culture. <laughs> Sound stemming from 
Arlington down to Puyallup. Uh, we have a number of people who couldn't make it, but I also wanted to explain how we became associated with the Center for Wooden Boats. My children's father is a carver, and he carved canoes. The canoe right behind us is one of them. He's carved probably about eight dugout canoes that have been gifted around Puget Sound. The Duwamish have one, Nisqually has one. He carved me one, which I gifted to my village in Alaska. In return for giving them a canoe, they carved a totem pole that was to honor me as the giver, Sadutz as the carver, and the center for wooden boats for allowing it to have a home. So we've been associated with the center for wooden boats with their, my children's father as an artist in residence for at least 20 years. And so this is my children's second home. So that is how, when we needed a place to perform, we decided the Center of Wooden Books would be good. So that is who we are. Uh, we also would like to thank the Duwamish for allowing us to pass through on their land. This is the land of the Duwamish and we all are here as visitors. So we do extend an offer of thanks to the Duwamish for allowing this. Thank you. Good by clan leader Willie Brown Klawan is his name of the Tongass Bear Clan. He sang it to his future wife to be Sonia Kwan, Cape Fox woman. We sing it in honor of George Samuels, an esteemed elder from our group who has walked into the forest. <laughs> Yeah. 
My name is De Hua. I am a Tlingit Alaska native, and I would like to thank you for watching us do our video performance, and we would like to thank Rainier Beach for inviting us. I would also like to introduce my children's father, Sadoops Peel. He is a Haida. Uh, we are both from two different tribes, both Alaska Native, but two different tribes. I asked him to be with us because we are in the center for wooden boats. The totem pole behind me was gifted to me as the gifter, Sadutz as the carver, and the wooden boat center for giving it a home to live in. The, the totem pole came from John Rowan out of Cloak, Alaska, and it was a thank you for the canoe that I had gifted to Cloak, which is my home village. So I would like Sadutz to add a few words, please. My name's Sadutz, and I've been an artist in residence here for many years cultural connection, carving cultural connection, invited by Dick Wagner, the founder of the Center for Wooden Boats, and his wife, Colleen. And I've been here for many years, like I said, is building canoes with young people from every culture, teaching cultural connection. And he made a canoe in honor of reconnecting to the village of Cloac. She gifted the canoe back and reunited with her family and the village. And the, the honor pole here, it was the old potlatch style, but they honored us and brought it back down in two years. And to mention that all of this going on is not to forget the Duwamish living here while we're speaking, is that we're honoring them at the same time, asking permission what we're doing here is we're on somebody else's territory and we need to honor it all the time. Whatever we do in public, in mind that we're on somebody else's land, that they're the caretakers, and to honor each other wherever we're at when we go into somebody else's village or town, do nothing but good, don't bring any garbage to there. And this, that's what this cultural connection is all about, about staying together, eating together. How can we help Awa, our Mother Earth? How can we live for each other and lift up each other in ways? And it's just simple, simple ways that we do is recognizing what we can do together, the young people, encourage them. The canoe here was made mostly by third graders and it was gifted to the Center for Wooden Boat called the Ganuk. Enough. And um, Stephen Phillips, it has two names. So it's been busy, a busy canoe, and I'm so happy to be invited here to the center in the middle of Seattle. And what we've been teaching is about bringing people together and the positive, positive teaching. It's about posit positivity and about compassion honoring each other, grandmother, the songs they've been singing, honoring all living things. It's so important that we talk about it because what I look at this year, this is what they call the umbilical cord of the earth. It holds the story. In our way, this is the story of what we've been going through at our time, this time in that it still works, the potlatch. When we gifted the canoe, we paddled it from my village to her village. And we were recepted by hundreds of people to honor that. And it lasted for a couple of days and brought the canoe back. So it, it brought back the potlatches and bringing back balance to our lives, to each other. And see, um, I'm just thankful, as I said, and 
reconnect, keep our children learning, our grandchildren. Many people are learning from this how to take care of each other and take care of the canoe, honor it. No matter what we do is how we take care of our house, our canoe, how we feel about it, how it reacts in the ocean. I have to bring this up to this lady. She saved my life and being stubborn on the canoe journey. We were going out in this canoe and when we were, came out of the fog, all hell broke loose and we, we were in the worst storm and she wouldn't let me leave the coast without a life jacket. I have to admit that that's part of a story that was a journey and it saved all our lives. And that's what the pros and cons are, is that very strong lady and they say something, you could better listen. I probably wouldn't have made it off the shore if I didn't put it on, so I had to put it on in front of everybody. <laughs> so this is what I have to say. It's all about the growth, compassion, being thankful. Like I said, thanking the Duwamish and all the tribes here that were on their land. We're, they're the caretakers and we are guests on their land until we leave and if that time comes, we'll leave a gift here and then we will let them know and then we'll go back home. Our next group of songs are our water songs. We are a canoe coastal people who have lived off of the sea for thousands of years. We have a deep connection and a deep love and respect for the sea. Our brothers and sisters of the ocean, they're crying out for our help. They are letting us know that they are hurting. And we need to help them. What can you do? What can we do? grandma song. This was composed by Susan and she asked for my help so we worked on it together. This song is about a grandmother standing on the beach 
And she's thinking of her grandchild, and she's watching them play, and she's thinking of their safety, and the love, and the protection, and the sea. Our next song will be the killer whale song. to our hearts. This is the Women's Warrior Song composed by Martina Pierre, a member of the Lil Watt Nation in British Columbia. She shared it for all of us to sing. And Indigenous people throughout Canada and the U.S. are missing mothers, daughters, sisters, and aunties who have disappeared, never, never been found, or have been murdered. We honor the families, and wish for, for the return of their loved ones with this song.
it's time for us to say goodbye. We're going to sing Yela, which is our goodbye song. We will wave to you and you're welcome to wave back to us. And after we sing that song, we will do our exit song.